Now that we've covered where air comes from naturally with the fuel suspended in a stationary form, then we took the common service topic and talked about the agitation at higher altitudes, the fuel uh, temperature, the sloshing, the agitation. And now we've rolled, we rolled just right out of that into performance, being fuel mileage, horsepower, and regions, because all three of those relate to one another due to the fuel injection timing. Not the timing of the engine, well, which is still affecting that, but when the fuel actually enters the cylinder on top of the piston. Now we're going to go into the insurance side of FAST. And yes, I called it insurance because that's exactly what it is. We're increasing your lubricity at least 10%. I didn't include the amount of variation that Cummins talks about and some of these other ones are going to talk about that we're going to share with you. I, I was conservative on how much that Caterpillar says, how much air it is in the fuel in a stationary form. Okay, so we're being very conservative. I believe in understating and overperforming. So the first thing that we're going to get into on the insurance side is directly from Caterpillar. And it's talking about fuel aeration right here, okay? And, and I'm going to break this down into how I understand this, okay? On a, that unit injector, anything that's going down to compress fuel, and you have a plunger going down to compress the fuel, yeah. that fuel, that liquid, creates a fluid dampener. I like to call it a shock absorber. So that fluid comes down and it compresses it, squeezes it out, and at times, that's pure fuel. Right. Because there's not air in every injection. That's where your mist comes from. But when it comes down, it compresses, it doesn't even touch. Okay, it doesn't slam. But when the Caterpillar says when there's a lack of fuel, up to 50% greater force on that tip. Right. That's where some of your busted tips come from. And we're not gonna have this one covered anywhere, and there's a chemist that brought it up to me, and then I went um, and had this documented, and I was at a, a speech one day, I was up on stage, and a guy, a chemist in the audience stopped me. He says, when you have air, fuel, and high pressure coming out of that injector nozzle, at times you're building a cutting torch. They don't talk about that in this category right. article. Think about it. fuel, air, and high pressure. You have a cutting torch coming out of the orifice and opening it up, cutting it, and it's not going to do it evenly, so it's going to open those orifices up unevenly and cut down on the atomization. That's kind of where we talked about possibly the uh, cutting effect into the piston. Right, right. Okay, so that's the Caterpillar article. Now, we're going to get talk about the premier hydraulic school in the U.S. And that's Milwaukee School of Engineering. Okay, and they're getting into the effects of contaminants upon hydro. Uh, hydraulic fluids that it has on the hydraulic system. Now I'm going to turn the page right here. The viscosity is a measure of a fluid's resistance to flow. Fluids that have a high resistance to flow have a high viscosity. The viscosity of an oil is highly dependent upon its temperature. Kind of getting back to that common surface topic. Right. Okay. Now, right here, lubricants reduce the friction in a machine components by producing a barrier or film which separates surfaces that roll or slide past each other. I don't think that was typed correctly. That seems off a little bit, okay? So you're creating a film. So just like an oil film is on a crank and rod, yep. you're keeping the surfaces off one another. But when you have air, a lack of lubrication, that's where you get your golden and scoring. The viscosity of an oil is highly dependent upon its temperature. Since effectiveness, effectiveness of a hydraulic fluid is largely dependent upon its viscosity, System temperature should be considered when selecting a hydraulic oil. You know, I just put that together. In the summer, you run a different oil than you do in the winter. Right. Well, unless you live in Florida, Arizona. Of course. Okay. And it says right here, and we can't pick our oils for our fuel. Right. We you get what we get. The, raising the temperature of a typical hydraulic oil from 100 degrees to 140 degrees will cut its viscosity in half. You're cutting its viscosity in half, so you're expanding that fuel. Now you put it under a vacuum. Now, you, whenever you have a liquid under a vacuum, you have that vapor. This vapor that was being produced is being increased as we increase the vacuum, yep, just like yep. a dirty filter, right. or as I'm doing here on the valve. Now, I'm gonna skip the page. Most hydraulic systems are designed to operate at a bulk fluid temperature of 140 degrees or less. It says an oil viscosity is cut in half by every 10 degrees Celsius, okay? From a practical standpoint then, an oil at 160 degrees has a half the life expectancy and provides 
half as thick of an oil film as it would at 140 degrees. So from 100 to 140, it cut in half. From 140 to 160, it cut in half again. Fast is not gonna take care of all that because what's cutting in some of it in half is just the fluid itself. Right. But it's also the thinner the fuel and the more vapor you have, i.e. air, and that happens to be in our name, isn't it? Fuel air separation system. <laughs> We know about the um, um, viscosity now. We know it happens from 100 to 140 degrees up front and also from 140 to 160. I don't know what it keeps going on from there. Right. Okay. But right here, it is estimated that 75 to 85% of hydraulic system failures are a direct result of fluid contaminant. There are two types of contaminants, fluids and solids. Probably the most destructive fluid contaminant is air. It causes severe cavitation and can destroy a pump in a matter of minutes. The air, which is usually dissolved in the fluid, is pulled out of solution at the inlet side of the pump due to the pressure at the pump suction port being a vacuum. So if all that was under a positive pressure like FAST does do and that, that PESOL does, right. you're not experiencing quite as much as what they're discussing here. But the number one fluid condemned is air. And that, that's what we take out. And then that leads to the Gaulian scoring. Right, right. And this is... A uh, real world failure that many people with pickup trucks have at least heard about if you had experienced it. My friend got that, in, we've gotten that in the mail. Yeah, we've gotten it on, on two of our trucks. Right, and my friend, uh, yeah, my friends have gotten this in the mail. Yeah, and this is the recall from Ram uh, for the CP4 failures. Now, a lot of people have done the CP3 conversions because of a failure right. or for a preventative. Now, uh, one of the reasons the CP4s are failing is the lack of lubrication. Okay. Right? Uh, part of it is the diesel fuel, um, just the, the nature of the blend of the fuel here in the States, according to the lawsuit okay. we have here. But the galling from the lack of lubrication in that CP4, and you're going to send uh, metal particulates downstream and into the fuel injectors, and that usually leads to a complete fuel injection system replacement. CP4, fuel lines, uh, uh, fuel injectors and sometimes fuel tank. And I don't know what, you know, we have so many costs in fuel systems. It can range from, what, several thousand to... Is it easily uh, 10,000. Yeah, easily 10,000 and talking about what kind of equipment, if you're talking about earth moving equipment, not only are you replacing the injection system, you have downtime, and where are you down? Are you down in the pit and your machine's not bringing the equipment, you know, right. uh, raw material up, uh, you know, or are you broke down in Wyoming Going, well, I guess you won't be going to Yellowstone right now. No. But, but where you broke down for your family trip. Right, right. Or like you said, a work so, truck trying to make money with it. You broke down on the side of the road. And... Explain this galling to us. What is galling and scoring? So galling is when you have two metal surfaces rubbing together. Okay. And with a lack of lubrication. It's so that, to... that film of oil is not in here. Right, that film separating. oil. Right, which would be separating them. Okay. You have the two metal surfaces rubbing together. And that can transfer one material from one surface onto the surface of the other. And that's the galling. So it's not extrude hunting and polishing it, huh? uh, Unfortunately not. It's not okay. nice and smooth. Uh, you could feel that. It'd be rough, uh, you know, rough to the touch. Now, galling and scoring isn't the only damage that can be done uh, from air and the lack of lubrication. You want to go on and talk about cavitation? Yes, and that's back to the Milwaukee School of Engineering. Okay, and they were talking about the 75 to 85% of uh, the fluid contaminants and the worst being air is causing the damage, okay? And I'm gonna read something. This will be boring for a second, but I'll make it good, okay? <laughs> Cavitation where it is caused by high impact pressure created when vapor in gas bubbles in a liquid violently collapse to the gross change in fluid pressure. Cavitation itself is a two-step process. First, at a low pressure, a bubble or void is formed. After the void is formed, it implodes when it is subjected subjected to high pressure. The bubbles may be, may be created by turbulence, by dissolving gases, all those things that the Cummins the service topic was talking about yeah. on top of what Caterpillar is talking about of just the air and stationary fuel. Yeah. But guys, I'm gonna bring it to life, okay? Let's imagine this is the inside, this is a metal surface somewhere in your injection system, your CP4 that's getting ready to crap out on you, okay? Imagine this air bubble over the surface, imagine fluid over that, and then all of a sudden, it slams. You have that pressure. 
and it pre the, the, the fluid collapsing through that air bubble gives it travel time and speed to actually run in to the surface and pull ch tiny chunks of metal away. And it pits it. Kind of like a sandstorm on your paint job when you're going across I-80 west of Salt Lake. And those guys out there at the, speed, at the Bonneville uh, Salt Flats, when a, salt, when a storm comes in like that, it peppers it and it takes paint. Well, guess what? You're not taking paint. You're taking the lining, those, uh, those tight tolerances, you're opening them up, and you're also sending flakes of metal through the system. So that is how we're saving your fuel injection system. But what we're going to do, we're going to come back, but we're going to talk about more articles that's supporting documents from Fortune 500 companies, from premier hydraulic schools, and you have one more down here also that relates to the type of uh, recall that's being done on the CP4s. Yeah. So this one, this is again with the CP4 failures. This was a lawsuit filed by uh, Hillard Martinez Gonzalez, LLP. Uh, looks like they're located in Texas. And this is just a lawsuit filed uh, against Bosch for the CP4 failures. Okay, so Josh and I have explained in just a few documents here from Fortune 500 companies what's what's happening and what's causing this injection system failure and it doesn't have to be on a cp4 it can be on unit injectors yeah. you know the injectors on a on a p-pump they last forever because the tolerances are loose right okay now we help out horsepower and fuel lines immensely of course but when they tightened it up and went with these high pressures 30 40 50 thousand psi now air is killing these things and we're, we're talking about gulling and scoring keeping the two metal surfaces off and separated from one another. We're talking, we just spoke about cavitation, that fluid, you know, going through and pulling chunks of metal away. Right. Okay. Now we're going to get into more of the lawsuits that are out there and more of the Fortune 500 documents that give us a total support of what we've been preaching and selling to you. So I don't, you know, I want to have, yeah, you know, sometimes we sound, sound like sham wow up here. <laughs> okay. Well, we have fun doing this, but it's all based based off fact and truth.